to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Father, we trust you and that is why we are here. We believe in your power to work wonders in the midst of your people. We have come trusting, we have come believing, we have come to learn, we have come to be transformed, we have come to obtain testimonies that validate once again that in spite of all that has happened and is happening in our world, you still remain Lord of all. And so I pray, O oh God, tonight that there will be the hearing of faith and even the workings of miracles move in our midst glorify jesus let our hearts be so edified in the name of jesus bless our hearts in jesus name i pray god bless you please be seated be seated again it's an honor to be here um i i really sense that the lord would have us pray a bit tonight I know that this is an apostolic ministry and um, prayer is powerful praise the Lord I also believe that somewhere in the course of this service this short session that I have that the Lord will stretch his mighty hand to heal to deliver to transform in the name of Jesus Christ praise the name of the Lord so I'll just lay a foundation to start off my um, the sessions and um, I believe that it's been a wonderful time Romans chapter 15 and verse 19 if it's possible and you can see it let's read together in concert ready one to read through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Lyconium. Did I pronounce that well? If I didn't, just mention whatever you see. I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. That means that the gospel cannot be said to be fully preached until there is a dimension of it that captures and reveals signs and wonders. Paul is speaking and it's like a checklist. And he's saying on the strength of this and that and that, I can stand with confidence to say I have fully preached the gospel. Please keep that scripture there. It then means it is possible for the gospel to be preached but not fully preached. And I think that we live in a time where there is an increased need to capture other dimensions of the gospel that sadly are gradually fading. Our fathers handed to us a very complete gospel, a gospel that captured the whole counsel of God. Are we together? And now through the years and through the vicissitudes of life, we began to edit the gospel and remove certain dimensions of the gospel that make it powerful and make it worth hearing. And one of it is the miraculous and the supernatural. For some reason, we found a way to reduce the gospel from the realm of of supernatural power to the realm that only relates to the intellect and now don't get me wrong there is a dimension of the gospel 
that relates to the intellect because a true gospel must transform society and we must draw values from the gospel. The gospel is both a message and an ideology. There are two dimensions to the gospel. The gospel is first a message that saves. Then it is an ideology that seeks to enthrone Christ and his purposes across every strata of human activities. So these dimensions must be captured in our idea of what the Bible calls the gospel. But in a bid to preach and advance the frontier system, I would call it an attack on the body of Christ. Gradually, gradually, certain dimensions of the gospel began to fade. Are we together now? Yes. And there is an explanation for that. But then it looked like we started experiencing what Gideon experienced. Because when the angel of the Lord came to Gideon, his contemplation and his discussion was, where are the signs? I know one time you said God moved. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not part of this now. You don't come and tell me something that I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced. Where are the signs? Listen, if these dimensions of the gospel are not restored, then it takes only one generation of neglect. And many people will not be able to define God by all the attributes that truly make him God again. A time will come when God will become a philosophy, no longer a reality. Then we will reduce him and edit him based on the templates of our experiences. Through signs and wonders, he said, from Jerusalem, I have fully preached the gospel. I came from a background where I didn't have the opportunity to see the miracle working power of God. Very well intentioned, sincere evangelical background, full of people with character, morality. But I knew something was missing in our understanding of God. The sick went back sick. The oppressed went back oppressed. I used to sing hymns those days that said so many things we could not prove and the service would finish and people would go back as though we were playing as though we were acting as though we were lying they would sing songs about the might of god sing songs about his miracles how he parted the red sea we would admonish ourselves with psalms hymns and spiritual songs and it will end only in theory then the preacher would come most well-intentioned personality and you could see a desire if only i had the grace to reveal the wonder working power of god you would even see people cry and the painful part of that service is when we have to share the grace without transformation without an evidence people would walk through that door hoping that god were not a scam We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. So you will do what you do. Here's the word now. We need a move. We need a move. The first time I would watch a preacher capture a dimension of God my heart so desired. Some, you, you see, the thing about God is that he designed man to need the fullness of him. No matter what dimension of God you have experienced, while you get satisfied by being filled with one dimension, that same encounter leaves you hungry for the other part of God. It was a system designed by his intelligence to make sure man never gets exhausted seeking him. So when you come to him, his first assignment is to feel the current hunger then his, it, it causes you to, to want another dimension again. 
That realm is called eternity. He put it in man. Hallelujah. So we have seen the God who saves. We have seen the God who is kind. But very few people have seen the dimension of God that we call the God of wonders. Hmm. Hallelujah. Jesus in Luke chapter 11. Let me just introduce my discourse for tonight. Jesus in Luke chapter 11, please. You give us from verse 1. Please be patient with the reading. The Bible says, And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of the disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Now, the disciples had walked with Jesus for a while, and they noticed the dimension of wonder and power. He, he seemed invincible. It was as though there was nothing that was not within his reach as far as the purposes of the father was concerned. Remember this scripture. Please give it back to us. This was not talking about prayerlessness. They were already praying. This was talking about prayer that did not produce results. The disciples were frustrated. There was something about their prayer life. It wasn't producing results. They were tired of going to the synagogue and hear the, the, the Pentateuch or the Psalms, you know. They would read it and chant it and say a lot of things. Remember that one of the members in that parish was a woman who had been bound for 18 years. Are we still Bible students? I can imagine what was in the mind of that woman. Every time they read about the God who parted the Red Sea, etc. The woman would sit there and say, God, where are you? Is there anything too hard? Ah, then comes Jesus. Now I love Jesus. He does not just say, he does. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, he said, for he had anointed me. The Bible says it was given to him, the scroll of Esaias. And when he took it, he began to read the messianic prophecy. And then he said, this day, not tomorrow, let this be a prophecy for someone. It will be this day. No delay again. This day, in the name of Jesus the Christ of God. He said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears and he saw a man with a withered hand no explanation no excuses mr man stretch your hands the gospel that captures power that captures dimensions of the supernatural back to luke chapter 11 so the disciples came to him verse 1 and they said teach us to pray that means reveal to us a formula that is hidden in your prayer life that has results to show for it. Something about the barrenness in our prayer is frustrating our experience. Can you teach us? And notice, Jesus didn't say, oh dear, I, I think you're just being humble. He knew something was wrong with their prayer lives. Next verse, please. Verse 2. And he said unto them, when ye pray, something is wrong i love jesus now he's helping them this is deliverance happening and the first assignment is to reconstruct their understanding he says when you pray say our father that is the first revelation of prayer now i'm not really teaching on prayer there's there's somewhere we're going but just as an introduction he says when you pray Come to God with a consciousness that he is Abba. The word Abba means he is source, he is sustainer and defender. That means something about your not understanding God is affecting the results that you get from him. He says when you come to God, you must come with this consciousness that he is Abba. And the principal quality of fathers is that they give. If you being evil, he said, know how to give, not just how to lead. Not just how to talk. A true father is a giver. Automatically, that takes away the doubt and fear. Will God do it? Will God heal? Will his outstretched hand come? We are talking of Abba. Father. So he says, when you pray, come with this consciousness. Number one, our father. Number two, 
your interaction with God will require faith because he is in a realm that is not earthly, which art in heaven. So it informs you immediately that this interaction is between two realms. That even though you are on earth and he's in heaven, there is still a technology that can sponsor communication. That means faith. You must come in faith, which art in heaven. Number three, that you come with the spirit of reverence. Hallowed be your name. That the consciousness of the benevolence of the Father should not lead to carelessness. That you must come with a sense of reverence. Next verse, please. Keep it for us there. It says, thy kingdom come. That means that your desire and your prayer, more than your needs being met, should be his kingdom coming. That means that the root cause of your prayer request in the first place is because his kingdom is not there. That if you focus on his kingdom coming, you may not even need to pray other prayers again. Your kingdom come. How? It tells you how the kingdom comes on earth. By your will being done. That everywhere his will is done, his kingdom comes. And that it should come in earth. Notice it never said on earth. In earth. And the first earth is you. So your kingdom come and your will be done in my life. As this portion and piece of earth. This is my... We're getting close to my verse of emphasis now. Number three, give us this day our daily bread. Wow. He would have said, give us this day food. But he's saying, according to the law of my benevolence, there is an allocation that is daily. I'm speaking to someone here, not monthly, not weekly, not yearly. You can, he says, give us our daily bread not our bread that means every 24 hour it recycles in the spirit god is able and willing to supply for the day give us day by day or this day our daily bread verse 4 it says and forgive us our sins as we forgive everyone that is indebted to us very powerful this is a revelation of mercy that whilst you obtain mercy from God, you must know that you are dealing with the realm of men. And that means your heart must be positioned to communicate out of the abundance of that which you have received. Here is my discourse tonight. And lead us not into temptation. This is a call for discernment. That we are living in an environment where not everything is exactly as it looks. Therefore, we will need discernment. It's an advocacy. Lead us not into temptation. There is something about your leadership. But, there are times when the evil will not come because of your carelessness. There are times when the evil will come because of the territory where you reside. It says when you find yourself in that situation, it's no longer an issue of your carelessness. That when you get to that time, the prayer is deliver us from evil lead us not into temptation you have a personal responsibility to walk with the spirit of god discerning what to do where to go but there are times that the things that happen to you are things that are common to men it says at such time deliver us from evil please look up according to scripture the wonders of God among many functions. The principal reason for the wonder of God is, is a demonstration of his love, his might, his providence. And as a system of judgment, are we together now? Over the kingdom of darkness is always an advocacy of the exodus of his people to the place of destiny. The principal instrument of deliverance in scripture is the wonder walking power of God. So when the God of wonders wants to show up, there has to be an occasion where the threat, the pride, and, and, and the challenge of darkness is buffeting his people. He does not just come as savior, he comes with the God of wonders. Signs that dumbfound the minds of all and sundry. 
It's, it's like a signature. It's like God stretching himself again and saying, I'm still the monarch of the universe. Very, very powerful. Deuteronomy chapter 26 and verse 8, please. Deuteronomy 26 and verse 8. And the Lord brought us forth from out of Egypt. Egypt is a land of wizardry, a land of slavery and captivity. He brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders. Psalm 66 verse 3 says, Say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways. It says, through the greatness of thy power, not just desire. People of God, it takes more than desire to experience the fullness of God in the wicked world that we live in. It says, through the greatness of your power, shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. An instrument of deliverance. Psalm 30 from verse 11, please. Just looking at a few scriptures. Psalm 30 verse 11. It says, Thou hast turned for me. I receive it for myself. Thou hast turned for me. My mourning into dancing. It says, Thou hast put up my sackcloth. And girded me with gladness. Verse 12. It says, To the end that my glory may sing praise unto thee. And not be silent. Oh Lord my God, I will give thanks to you. You have turned my morning to dancing. Something about your hand. Is it not in your Bible that when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, he said he did it in a spectacular way. It was like a dream. The recipients of that miracle could not even comprehend the dynamics of their own deliverance. He says, turn again the captivity of Zion like the streams of the Negev. Deliver us from evil. There is something about man. John chapter 4 and verse 48. There is something about the fallen man. That because of the nature of men outside of the influence of the spirit. They would require a spectacular display. A dimension of power a dimension of the might of god that generally the bible says where the carcasses are it says there the eagles will gather there's something about men and things that are usual they don't seem it looks like the lifespan of honor for men does not is is very short the moment they see a thing and they can discern the dynamics around it when they conquer it they no longer value it this is this is a weakness in men so when men see something that is spectacular their next assignment is through the instrument of science or divination to unravel the mystery behind that process if they successfully unravel the mystery behind that process they will no longer be afraid of it the dynamism of god's wonders is such that no man can articulate the extent the dynamics you cannot decipher the dynamics how god will come he will choose a method only left to his intelligence so you expect him to part the red sea and he says you walk on water he has he has he has a variety of ways and the goal is to force the pride of man to admit the fact that there is a god in heaven you would read through scripture that almost there are few miracles that repeated themselves in the bible it's a technology to keep men humble because men dishonor what they are used to it's a weakness in men please follow me carefully there is a principal weakness in men when they are used to people when they are used to processes when they are used to things the more familiar they become with people with places with things their honor also drops and so God invented a strategy to keep men in awe of him. And the name given to that strategy is the signs and wonders, manifestations of his power. 
So sometimes you expect him to show up for you through an uncle that based on your parameter, you have calculated it, you have gauged the extent of benevolence. And if only you were assisted a little and God will say, not so. If I do it that way, you will be confused whether it was just his will or it was my contribution. I will use someone, did I not say strangers will feed your flock. Let me tell you this, you know it is God when it is marvelous. He said, if it is the Lord's doing, the way we celebrate God on receiving our testimonies almost showed that he, you can almost say he did not have a hand in it. The, the way it happened so casual. You read your Bible, there is nothing casual about God. If it is God and he shows up, he must leave a signature that will leave you in tears. There are times that it's your knees that will give the testimony, not your mouth. You, you, you go down on your knees and you wonder. An instrument of deliverance. Because you see, Pharaoh, Pharaoh is not a child. Pharaoh is not even a pure man. Pharaoh is a wizard. Pharaoh had been mentored through the art of wizardry. And so when Moses came to him and said, Pharaoh, thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go. I can imagine Ramesses, his half-brother, saying, Pharaoh, I mean Moses, why, why have you come to embarrass yourself? You would have spent your remaining days in the wilderness. Now you have come to test Egypt. And he said, well, I'm not going to talk so much. He threw his rod. His rod became a serpent. And Pharaoh laughed. He said, this is all you've got? This is Egypt, Moses. This is not the wilderness. Janus, Jambes, bring your rod. Let this man know we have unraveled the realm of the spirit that far. I can imagine God watching. Say, keep, ah. Rejoice not over me, my enemy. There is still more in God. All you've seen is not all he has. God has mysterious arsenals of deliverance. And I'm telling you, you don't dare him to release them. Because there is something God can do that both you and the enemy will keep. There will no longer be war. Both of you will stand in awe. And say, now who is this one? The king of the universe. Honestly speaking, there are not many people who have seen the wonder working power of God. We have seen principles work. But we have not seen the wonder working power of God. You see, principles lead to predictable outcomes. It's still a dimension of God's power that sponsors them. But the wonder working power of God, uh uh. There were miracles that were performed on people, and Jesus begged them and said, Please don't talk. They were too grateful to keep quiet. And I believe in the name of Jesus standing in faith with the apostle over this house that someone listening in the name of Jesus I'm speaking to you by the grace and by the mercy of God that between now and even tomorrow morning in the name that is above all names you will not only receive wonders you will return a wonder yourself. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 20. The wonder of God as an instrument of deliverance. Pharaoh does not let people go because they want to go. There is, there is a dimension of the outstretched arm of God that compels darkness to release you. Listen to me. Now, by the grace of God, I know that we love the Lord, but I think there is something that has been a burden for me sir many believers do not know how determined satan is now the bible does not tell us to study satan but it tells us to study his strategies i can tell you one one of the traits of satan is his doggedness and his resilience just because God said to let you go just because God said for the door of your destiny to be open don't you think Satan left Jesus for a while he reinvented himself and came back through Peter reinvented himself and came back through Judas 
Satan is that determined. So the idea and the narrative that just because you have access to the tools of redemption, the name, the blood, etc. automatically means your destiny will open up. That kind of thinking itself is an attack. Are we together now? Yes, sir. There is an engaging through understanding. There is a dimension where you will have to call on the power of God to be made manifest for that chain, for that door that would not let you go, to let you go. I know one thing about the realm of the spirit. It only answers to power. It only answers to a dimension of the supernatural. There is no ministry that will grow just by sincere desire. It will take the outstretched arm of God, warding off the gates of hell. It will take the power of God for a business to grow. It will take the power of God for your influence to rise and to be sustained. This I know. Many believers presume that just because they are well intentioned and they are sincere. It means that the devil would not attack them. No. I came to plant an aggression in you because we are going to pray. This is just an introduction. There are, things that, there are things that you must shake tonight and say enough is enough. You see, let me tell you, it is within your power to be angry and to be determined, a holy anger, to say in the name of Jesus, this door must open. In the name of Jesus, I press forward. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 20. I will stretch out my hand and I will smite Egypt with all my wonders. Not some. This is what it takes for Egypt to let you go. Not some. Egypt is that stubborn. Please believe what I teach you. Egypt is that stubborn. It will take the full weight of God's arsenals all my wonders please give us that scripture which i will do in the midst thereof after that joshua selman finally he will let you go after that old businessman that means there is a quality in satan god is revealing that he can be tired he can be weary to the degree to which you resist the devil there is an assurance that he will flee so if it does not flee it means the resistance is not strong and determined enough i will visit you with my wonders and afterwards he will let you go tonight is just an introduction we are going to pray i truly came with a burden in my heart sharing the burden of your man of God to see that we not just come up with intelligent exegesis of scripture and then return back with our lives with no results. No, no. It is the reason why society continues to look at the church as a nuisance to civilization. There is a dimension of the power of God they are yet to see that will cause our world to once again sing the songs of Miriam. I will sing unto the Lord, she said, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and even the riders. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.